Okay, in this video, we're going to look at how to fill out the gridables on the Algebra 1 EOC for Texas. So here's what your gridable document looks like. And so, um, first off, the correct answer can be a positive or a negative number. And here's where you denote that. you got your positive and your negative symbol. If the answer is negative, you must shade in the negative signs. You must bubble this if it's negative. But if no sign is marked, it assumes that it's positive. So you can put the positive if you want to, but you have to put the negative if it's a negative number. Next, it says the answer grid includes a floating decimal point. Notice you see up here, your decimal could be any place. I could put it all the way far to the right. I could put it all the way far to the left. Um, but if the answer is a decimal number, students must enter a decimal point. We'll, we'll talk about that on the next slide. Students must enter their answers in the boxes and then fill in the corresponding bubbles. Students do not have to use all the boxes and can place their answer in any set of consecutive boxes, meaning I don't have to have a number in every single one of these boxes if I don't need it. Extra zeros may be filled in either before or after the answer as long as their placement does not affect the value of the answer. Now, let's look at some examples. On our first example, let's see how we'd bubble in a 5. It is a positive, so I could put the positive, and then we have a 5, which I could put anywhere. So that right there would be a valid answer. If I wanted to, I could put the decimal. But remember, you don't really have to put the decimal unless your answer is a decimal. Since 5 is a whole number, that would be an acceptable answer as well. My 5 could go anywhere. I could put it there, okay, and not have the decimal since it's a whole number. That would be a valid answer, okay. I could put it all the way over to the left. And then as, as it mentioned on the last one, you can put zeros as long as they don't affect your answer. So I could, if I wanted to, bubble all zeros, and I would bubble those in a little bit clearer because adding those zeros after the decimal does not affect the value of my answer. Now, let's clear that off. Let's look at our next example, 0 0.356. It's a positive. So we could put the positive, but I don't have to. So this time I'm not going to put the positive. And so we have a decimal point, three, five, six. So I'll shade in the three, I'll shade in the five, and I'll shade in the six. If I wanted to, I could put a zero there, but you don't have to. That zero doesn't really change the value of anything. If I wanted to, I could put a zero there to show it's 0 0.356, but that you don't have to either. You can add your zeros onto the end or onto the beginning as long as they don't affect the value of your answer. So we could put our 356 there, or you know I could put it anywhere as long as I have my numbers in the correct um, relationship to the decimal. So if I have my decimal over in the far left, then the next three would be my, um, oops, my point three five six. That would be an acceptable answer as well. Now let's look at the next one. Next we have negative two fifths. Now notice there's not a like a fraction bar on our gridable. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna convert that to a decimal. I just do negative two divided by five in my calculator, and I get negative point four. Well, since this is a negative, I have to shade in that negative, and then I could put zero point four. That would be a valid answer. Another way I could write this would be I could just put somewhere else, I could just put point 0.4. Okay, and then shade in the corresponding bubbles below. I could put the zero out in front before that decimal, but I don't have to. Okay, next, let's look at our last option, negative 35.8. It's a negative, so I'm going to shade in my negative, and then I'm going to do 35.8, okay? So 35.8, that would be a valid way of writing this answer, but since I do have the floating decimal, you can always move it all the way to the right. So I could do negative 35.8 that way, and I would shade it in. So obviously for any answer that's aggridable, you're not going to, if you, you know, you get an answer like x equals 5, you're not going to put in the x equals, you'll just put in the number part of the answer. Um, and so I think that's pretty straightforward. Just make sure you include your negative. 
make sure you bubble these dark and neat. I probably didn't do the best example of that on this, but I want to make sure I'm perfectly in the lines like that decimal is. I want to make sure I've filled in all my gaps. I want to make sure it's nice and neat there on a problem like this, and you should be fine.